everybody. Lord Tremendous here. Got a better report here for you. 5,000 point battle. Tis I, Lord Tremendous of the Ogre Khans versus Cannon of Doom of the Empire of Sunstall. Uh, this is my usual Empire opponent. This is a, our usual great game. This one is close. And uh, if you sit back, relax, and get ready to see how this one goes, I think you'll enjoy it. Here's my list, and of course I start off with my characters. I have my Great Khan, uh, he's my general, he's got the Kingslayer, Hardened Shield, Talisman of Greater Shielding, Charm of Cursed Iron. And I named him uh, a Latin phrase that I'm not going to say, right, like uh, Deus uh, Corporis or something like that. Uh, I just call him Deus. But yeah, basically it's uh, Latin for Ghost Leader. And that's because an individual friend of mine wanted me to name him after a supernatural character, and I thought this was fitting. And I like it, for now. Now we done feeling our feelings, because I'd like to get out of this room before we both start growing lady parts. Next up I have my shaman, Skaz. Skaven and AC. He's got three extra spells, the Demon Heart and Shamanism, because a naked Skaz is an effective Skaz. Next up I have my Khan. He's my BSB, he's got the Axe Breaker Gauntlets, the Dragon Mantle, the Talisman of Shielding, and Spine Splitter. And last but not least, I have my Mammoth Hunter, Lord Tremendous. He's on his Tusker the War Teddy, he's got an Ogre Crossbow, Razor Blade, Armor of Fortune, a Rock's Charm, Lucky Charm, and he's got the big name Headhunter. He's a badass, you know, he rides Polar Bear, kinda goes without saying. For my core choices, I start off with a unit of 12 tribesmen, the good old boys. They have full command, iron fists, and the banner of discipline. Then I have a little bunker unit of 5 by tribesmen, Skaz's Spazzes. They have a banner and iron fists. For my special choices, I have a saber tooth tiger, Bow Wowzer. I have a unit of 6 scrappling trappers, my favored pets. And then I have a unit of five mercenary veterans, the Corpulent Bastards, with Banner, Musician, Iron Fist, Lethal Strike, Bodyguard, and the War Standard. This is my face-melting unit. For my Powder Keg category, I have a Thunder Cannon of Doom! As well as a five-man unit of Bombardiers, with Banner, Musician, the Flaming Standard, and they come stock with a raging amount of disappointment and let down. It's a shame, because they're beautiful models. For my Chained Beast category, however, always, always full of awesome and win, my Frost Mammoth, Rufus! He's got a couple of ogre crossbows and a guy he totes around, but man, this guy just kicks ass and takes names. I love this model. Alrighty guys, that's going to do it for my list. I'm going to post my opponent's list, play some music, feel free to pause it whenever you'd like to see what he chose. My spells, which are exactly what you're looking at. And here's deployment. All right, so as always, I, I just kind of throw my stuff down. I went over to the left side because my opponent deployed first. I knew he was going to go first. So I put my Merc Vets on the left to t counter his Cav because with Lethal Strike and everything, even at negative two to their, uh, to their armor save, they're a pretty solid matchup for that unit. 
Uh, I have Skaz and his Spazzes on the hill with the cannon just for the moment. They'll move uh, once I get my turn at the bottom of one. I have the Tribesman with my General right there uh, next to them on the hill as well. Kind of blocking line of sight to the cannon the best I can. Uh, Rufus is right next to them. He's just going to work support however he can. I've got Bow Wowser on the side. He's going to try to deflect that big unit of infantry you can see up there. Uh, I believe those are halberdiers. Uh, he's going to try to deflect them if at all possible. I've got my trappers in the forest to cause problems for anything he wants to charge in or through the forest. I've got Lord Tremendous on the side of the forest there to come around and go after War Machine Hill or deal with maybe the unit of handgunners, maybe the rioters. I don't know. We'll see. And then I've got the bombardiers to back up Lord Tremendous and hopefully do something this game or I'm taking them out of list. I've put five of them in there with a flaming standard and they have really disappointed me the last few games. So... We'll see. If they do good in this game, I'll keep them around. If not, they can go back to the shelf of shame. I don't care how nice the models are. For my opponent's side, uh, up top there, he's got his unit of knightly orders on the left. Uh, unit of knightly orders. He's got his support unit of swordsmen, the big-ass unit with his general, and I think, uh, oh, God, another character. I can't remember exactly what. And his big ass unit of 50 halberdiers. Behind him is his. No, behind him is his general on a dragon. Next to them is that uh, war altar, the war shrine thingy, the sacred altar, whatever you want to call it. Next to them is another unit of uh, swordsmen, just a support unit. On the hill, he's got an organ gun, he's got a cannon, and I believe he's got a rocket battery. Then he's got a big unit of handgunners with his BSB attached, and on the far right there is a unit of rioters. So, this is going to be a brutal game. Here's top of one after moving, and like I said, my opponent got to go first. So he comes forward reluctantly, uh, not the full throttle, you know, marching forward like I thought he might do, uh, with the exception of the riders on the right there. They move forward as far as they can to try to shoot up my uh, bombardiers. Not that I can blame them. That's probably a good choice. They're the weakest friggin' thing on the table. Anyway, uh, the rest of his stuff just kind of comes forward. His general jumps in front of his infantry. He actually gets into a bit of a traffic jam, in my opinion. But that's good. All I'm thinking is I can capitalize on this and hopefully use it to my advantage. Uh, but really, that's it for movement. He doesn't really have a magic phase. He's got a couple of guys with some bound spells, but I mean, at this point, they don't really do anything. So we go into shooting, and I don't remember what shoots at my trappers, but he's able to kill one. Not bad. Not bad. I'll take it. Then, of course, his riders fire at my bombardiers and are able to kill one of them because, like I said, these guys run around with their ass up in the air, so they just can't wait to take it. That's it for his turn, so here's bottom of one after movement, and I come forward, kinda. Uh, and by forward, I mean my tribes and move off the hill just to, I, I want his general on the dragon to charge me. I think I'm far enough away that his knights can't, and if they do, they're gonna take DTs for going through the water. It's worth it, unless they have that stalker standard, which I think they might, uh, but that's fine. If they fail, it'll give my mercenary vets an easy counter charge, hopefully, easier maybe. I don't take Skaz and his spazzes off the hill because I don't don't want him hit by the, either the dragon or the knights. Rufus doesn't really bother to move because everything seems to be coming towards me. Uh, my trappers move up to get in the way of the uh, handgunners. If you got to shoot through them, hey, it's, it's hard cover, so I'm going for that. Tremendous charges the riders and they flee and get away. The bombardiers move up their six inches to try to shoot at the handgunners and do something. And Bow Wowser moves up to the edge of the gra or uh, edge of the forest there with the idea of either uh, redirecting that little support unit if they're foolish enough to try to charge me, or to get in the way of the big horde brick of halberdiers uh, should the opportunity arise. That is it for movement. There's a better picture of Tremendous scaring off the riders, and that's fine. During the magic phase, I don't remember what spell I got off. It's right there, but I have to do it with overwhelming power, and I miscast. And I think I do it on four dice because I end up rolling a miscast 16, which is a hell of a way to start off my damn uh, turn there. But yeah, miscast 16. That is the highest I have miscast in 1.2 so far. The results of which I'm actually fine. I don't take any wounds, I don't lose the spell, but instead I take nine wounds to my unit, losing three spazzes. I pass my panic check, but holy crap did that suck. Not to be deterred, I am able to cast another spell, and I get Cheapskate back on the table. 
which is awesome because now he's facing off at the mortar. I'm sorry, it wasn't a cannon. He has a mortar on the table. Uh, but I'm facing off the mortar, the rocket battery, the organ gun, and with his random movement, my opponent doesn't know where I'm going with him. I could go anywhere. Uh, he's an inch away from the table. I had my opponent place him for me. Worked out great. What sucks, though, is that in order to get that spell off, I had to do it with overwhelming power, and uh, my opponent let it go through. That's the only reason he let it go through. And I miscast 12. Uh. <laughs> Two miscasts in as many spells. I'm on a roll. Due to amnesia, I lose Totemic Summon. So no more cheapskates this game. Bottom one, already down a spell. I... I you know, I only threw four dice at the first one. I threw three dice at the second one, and I'm rolling sixes like it's going out of style. I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. I'll let you know in, like, five more turns. I end up taking ten wounds or something like that, or ten hits from the spell, and uh, I take a wound on the unit and a wound on the character. So that wasn't terrible, but losing the spell really was. During the shooting phase, the four bombardiers with four D6 shots are able to kill two rioters. <sighs> That kind of wall of metal, you would suppose. At least four would die, but I guess I'm just being greedy, hoping that, you know, minimum or average three shots each would, would actually kill one guy each, but whatever. And then Cheapskate vents his fury on the mortar and does a couple of wounds to it. Uh, just to go back for a second, the organ gun has three wounds on it because of, uh, what is it, the Swarm of Insects spell or something like that from uh, Skaz. That was the first miscast, so now we're all back on the same page. With no combat, we go over here to top of two after movement, and there is some. Uh, my opponent's dragon general charges my tribesmen, and I'm fine with that. Uh, I have the combat res to stick. I'm not concerned about losing this combat. I'm steadfast nine with a reroll should be good to go. Uh, other than that, the rest of his army moves up, but cautiously, he, in my opinion, he overextended. I think my opponent realized that, but, you know, he's got a character on a dragon. I'd be excited to use him, too. I've had a character on a dragon. I was very excited to use him. Uh, his riders rally and run over to show my bombardiers what shooting really is all about, and his BSB charges my trappers and makes it. They stand and shoot, uh, and believe it or not, they actually put three wounds on him, and one got through. I was very impressed. I mean, don't get me wrong the trappers are screwed but they put a wound on his bsb and i'm very proud of him for that there's a better picture of his dragon general charging my good old boys and i'm hoping this goes my way and there's a better picture of his bsb charging out of the handgunners and taking a wound on the way into the trappers v like i said very very impressed with the trappers for able to slip a strength three wound through on his bsb since he has no real magic phase to talk about, we go into shooting, his volley gun turns to phase Cheapskate and blows his head clean off his shoulders. Can't blame him, but again, that is an excellent use of Cheapskate. He used his volley gun on my summoned unit, not any of my ogres. I'm fine with this. Then over here, his rioters fire at my bombardiers, but maybe they were inspired by my bombardiers' incredible cross-eyedness and inability to hit and wound, and only slip one wound through on the bombardiers. So maybe they're kindred spirits. I don't know. So we go into combat, and go figure, his BSB is able to kill three of my trappers. Uh, in return, the one trapper I can attack back does nothing. Uh, he has charge, three wounds, and a banner to my nothing. I need a one on 2d6, and I don't roll it. But I do get away. Uh, I break, I flee, and as you can see, the BSB just falls short by about four or five inches. The trappers are really in the mood to get the hell away. Uh, his BSB does touch the forest, he does take a danger terrain check, and he does pass it, so... I guess winner, you know, can't really complain, but at the same time, it's, it's, I'm so proud of the trappers, <laughs> they did so good. Then we go into combat over here, my general makes way, and then he issues a challenge, and I think about it, and I'm like, you know what, no. No, I'm not going to accept your challenge. And, uh, I end up, you know, of course my general is out of the combat now. Uh, and my tribesmen attack, and I think I'm able to put two or three wounds through on him. I'm not 100% on that. In return, he's able to kill a guy and two, put two wounds into the unit. You know, character on a dragon, they're pretty devastating. And he's got the Sonstol or something like that, that weird blade that is like anti-everything. Uh, but in the end, I do lose this combat, I'm steadfast, uh, and I make my break check. So, that's awesome. 
So we go over here to bottom of two after movement, and after a little bit of debate, my mercenary vets, I was going to charge his knights, but I knew that my general did not want to get into a one-on-one -on -one against a dragon, even if it is bleeding from the eyes. So instead, I decided to go with the easy choice and sent my mercenary vets into the dragon's flank. I figure if I can kill his general off and, uh, you know, take him out of the fight right away, I should be able to piecemeal take apart the rest of his army. That's the hope anyway. Plus, I got to imagine a general on the dragon's worth a ton of points, close to a K, so why not, right? Uh, my trappers do rally, which is outstanding. Lord Tremendous runs up to threaten the hand gunners, but at the same time, I'm setting myself up so I could charge his uh, war shrine if possible, because I don't want his stuff to be distracting if I can help it. Uh, the bombardiers turn to face the riders and get ready to shoot at them, because maybe I can kill one more. I don't know. Those things suck. And then Rufus moves up to get within six inches of the general, so I get all my attacks first. Uh, other than that, Skaz and Spaz stay right where they're at, and that's it for movement. Oh, no, that's not true. Bow Wowser, as you can see, moves up to block the Halberdier unit, because if I do break his uh, general and have to run him down, I will move forward, and I don't want his Halberdier unit to have an easy charge on me. That's it for movement. There's a better picture of my mercenary veterans making it into this char or making it into this combat, which I couldn't get them all the way close because the wings are a little low to the ground. But physics, you know, if you ignore them, I'm right up against them, which is awesome. During the magic phase, I get swarm of insects off on his volley gun, and I'm able to roll enough sixes to destroy the damn thing, which is simply outstanding. I was very pleased. Five d six strength, one hits doesn't sound scary. Well, actually, yeah, it does, but <laughs> when you can roll enough sixes, it's devastating. Love this path. Then we go into shooting, and my bombardiers are able to kill off the three remaining rioters. I'm not sure if this is a great use of their points or not, but hey, they got a unit, killed it, and uh, finally, they've done a little something. Took them like three rounds, but hey, they did something. Whoop-dee-doo. So we go into combat, and it is mega brutal, I don't mind telling ya. Uh, my, uh, what's it called, his character, his, uh, his general calls a challenge, I refuse, and he could put my BSB to the back or he put my general to the back. He chose to send my general, to, or, or to, to send my general out of the fight, I guess you don't move to the back anymore. Anyway. You know what the hell I'm talking about. Anyway, he flubs spectacularly. Rufus is within six inches of him, so his initiative goes down by three. Uh, he's able to get a couple of attacks off and kill off my unit champion. He directs everything into my unit champion because my BSB got to go first and he's got the axe breaker gauntlets. Well, I hit him and then I rolled a four up and I destroyed the Sonstol, <laughs> which best use of the afforded point item I've ever had. So he directs all his attacks at my unit champion and kills him doing three wounds. Uh, in return, I do all but one wound to him. He's got five wounds on him. I need to do one more to kill him, but he made enough saves. He breaks. Uh, only my, my good old boys pursue. They, he, he gets away. Uh, the ensuing panic chart, or panic tests are all passed. Uh, my mercs restrain, which is a shame because on a, on a joke roll, I actually would have caught him with the damn mercs. Hindsight. Uh, but they turn to face because I know the damn uh, knights and everything else is coming into my merc, so I'm hoping they can withstand the charge. Uh, but yeah, I know his halberdier unit isn't coming in because good old Bow Wowser's in the way. But yes, I won this combat and almost ran down his generals, so I feel good about that. Could have been better, could have been worse. So with that, we go over here to top of three after movement, and exactly what you expect to have happened, happened. Uh, his general rallied, his knights, and that little support unit of swordsmen slam into my mercs. Uh, his big unit of halberdiers charges into Bow Wowser. They all make it. Other than that, uh, his handgunners turn to face Lord Tremendous. His other unit with his, or his BSB joins that unit of swordsmen, and they just kind of move up slightly, which actually works out great, because now when his halberdier is over and after killing the dog, they will stand exactly where they're at. Uh, and he leaves a gap in between his handgunners and his swordsmen there, so that Lord Tremendous could actually charge the flank of his... Uh, uh, what is Sacred Shrine or whatever it is, and that's actually really awesome, because I'm seriously toying with charging Rufus into the BSB's unit on an assassination mission. The only thing that will stop me is I'm worried about charging through the forest and rolling four ones. I've done it before, and I don't want to do it again. And yes, since my trappers were in the forest, it is DT to Rufus. 
So, yeah, this game has gotten brutal and interesting all in the same turn. There's been a picture of all the death. <laughs> so the knights and the swordsmen into the mercs, and of course the huge unit of halberdiers into the dog. There's going to be a lot of blood, guts, and ass just everywhere in a second. Nothing happens in the magic phase. We're going to shooting, and his handgunners open up on Lord Tremendous and are able to slip a single wound through. Uh, I'm not sure if I got lucky or if his dice were just good to me, but I'll take it either way. Then his rocket battery opens fire on the bombardiers, killing another one, which, you know, whatever. <laughs> Sacrificial scumbags, anyway. And then, just because, he, uh, he fires his mortar into Lord Tremendous and hits and actually gets the wound through, so... <laughs> that was a hell of a shot, but yeah, now he's half dead, which... A little frustrating, but, you know, I'll manage. I will persevere. So we go into combat, and I'm not even gonna lie to you, I bounce, I roll, actually that's not true, I roll really really well. My merc vets put like five or six wounds on these guy, on his knights, unfortunately he makes his armor saves, I didn't roll any lethal strikes uh, for wounding, and uh, it's only negative two, and he made almost all of his uh, uh, armor saves, I think he missed three, two or three. So I guess that's about average, but in return, he kills two Merc Vets. I was able to do a lot of damage, however, to his little infantry unit on the right. I think I killed five or six of those guys, so that was actually really, really cool. In the end, I believe I win this combat, but he sticks and makes his uh, check. So we sit there for another round of beating the crap out of each other. Then in this combat, uh, I think Bow Wowser takes out one of <laughs> the halberdiers and then gets cut to ribbons by the rest of them, which was exactly what should have happened. Uh, I don't know if he overruns or if he reforms, but I know he ends up staying pretty much exactly where he's at. So, mission accomplished. So, here's bottom of three after movement, and there's just a little bit. I move Rufus over so he can get within six inches of the enemy and still shoot. I'm only able to get close enough to the infantry. I don't think I'm close enough to the knights. I might be. Doesn't matter. Can't remember. Uh, Skaz and his two remaining spazzes move up just slightly to get off the hill so that it uh, doesn't inhibit line of sight from my cannon. Uh, Lord Tremendous charges his war shrine. It flees, bounces through his general. General's fine. Uh, and I end up redirecting into the, into the handgunners who stand, shoot, and miss, which is awesome. So hopefully with a little luck, Tremendous will be able to blow through the handgunners, get into War Machine Hill, and deal with that for me, which would be nice. Uh, bombardiers move up uh, their six inches so they can try to shoot at his uh, war machines. Maybe I'll get lucky. Probably not. Uh, and then my trappers move up to block his little unit of uh, swordsmen there near, in the forest, or near the forest anyway, so they can't flank charge my tribesmen who charged into the infantry that were beating up on my merc vets. Uh, that's pretty much it for movement. There's been a picture of my tribesmen joining in on this fight, and that should push it over into my direction, right? And there's been a picture of Lord Tremendous slamming into the gunners after making his war shrine flee through the general, who made his panic check, which sucks. During the magic phase, I get chilling howl off on uh, Skaz and his spazzes. The idea is if anything shoots at him, it'll be more difficult to wound them. However, on three dice, I roll three sixes. <laughs> so... My dice are trying to help me. They really are. And I end up miscasting nine. So, yeah. What was supposed to stop me from taking a break check, or at least making it more difficult for my opponent to force the break check, I'm going to end up doing myself. Because I take nine strength, three hits to the unit. <sighs> Outstanding. The results of which are I lose another tribesman, and that's it. So that's not the worst thing in the world that could have happened, I suppose, but it still kind of sucks. Uh, yeah, like I said, the spell that was supposed to save me ends up costing me the panic check. I do pass my panic check, but damn it. Dice, I know you're trying to help me, and I appreciate it, but help me on my terms, not yours. Damn it, Dice. Uh, for the next spell, I'm able to get Awaken the Beast off on the Merc Vets. I give them plus one toughness. I did the upgraded version of the spell. And again, I'm just trying to mitigate as much damage to these guys as possible because I got a lot, a lot of knights to go through. I thought about doing strength. I really did. I know the extra negative one to their armor would have been great. But honestly, I'm just trying to stop him from doing any damage to me. And the hopes is I can do enough combat res by killing his infantry unit that uh, his knights are going to break anyway. That's my plan to doing this. So we go into combat, uh, because shooting is just irrelevant. My bombardiers fail, and Rufus misses. 
Uh, so I don't do terrible. I kill six of these guys. In return, they do nothing to me. They are steadfast, <laughs> but they still break, and I run them down. Lord Tremendous ain't letting that go. And thanks to Headhunter, I heal a wound. Yay! So Lord Tremendous is going to last a little bit longer. Uh, the overrun is massive. I think I go 11 inches and I run right into his mortar. So this went as beautiful as possible. His war shrine is fleeing. His handgunners are gone. And I'm into his mortar. Perfect. Wouldn't expect anything less from the man, the myth, the legend. That is Lord Tremendous. <laughs> Over here, yeah, all bets are off. This is actually insane. So the Merc Vets, clearly upset that some of their brethren have died, smoke six knights, okay? Are you looking at that? Six knights die, which is unfriggin' believable. In return, I don't do so great against the, I'm sorry, five knights die, I'm stupid. And it looks like six infantry die. I apologize. In return, I lose another Merc. I think I lose another Tribesman. But I win this one by a landslide. I don't even think he gets a roll. I think I win by that much. He uh, He's not steadfast. He's not stubborn. And I'm not going to be able to run him down. I just, they get away. Uh, the Tribesmen chase the infantry and they get away. And his knights uh, get chased by the Merc Fats and they get away. I just rolled low. It was unfortunate. Not only did I roll low, though, I rolled so low that the Tribesmen failed to run into the halberdiers and now my merc vets and my tribesmen are just exposed so that sucks uh i guess things went too well all at once and uh had to have a little bit of yin to mix with my yang you know you got that way you appreciate both you know it's all it's all balance <laughs> so <laughs> let's see what i can do in uh, my opponent's turn which is right here Welcome to top of turn four after movement. As you can see, things have gone left field. <laughs> kind of, not really. His BSB charged out of the unit and slammed into the flank of my tribesmen, which is fine. Uh, his halberdier unit slammed into my good old boys, which is not fine. That's really, really bad. His knights rally, his uh, hand weapon shield guys rally, his war shine rallies, and the little unit that his BSB came out of reforms to face my tribesmen next turn, which is also not fine. <sighs> That's it for movement. Kind of devastating. There's been a picture of my opponent getting ready to just break my jaw. <laughs> Nothing happens in Magic that I can recall. I clearly don't have a picture of it. So we go into shooting, and his rocket battery, you know, they've got the friggin' uh, angle, they've got the charting reticle right on these guys, and he blows away another bombardier. Because these guys just, I think they dive into the way of incoming projectiles, because they're just that stupid. And then my bombardiers freaking out because they got Steve. They panic and start fleeing off the table. So, you know, these guys. Ah, uh, yes, my bombardiers. I'm pretty sure I'm done with these guys again for a while. Just incredible disappointments. Beautiful models, incredible disappointments. So we go into combat because that's where all the fun happens. And uh, this goes pretty not great. Uh, well, I guess it doesn't go terrible. I'm able to kill like six or seven of his uh, of his guys. I think I kill his prelate because I just put some attacks into him and I'm able to get through and murder him. That's why he's over there on the top right there. Uh, in return, I lose a guy. Uh, not terrible. I think my general ends up in a challenge with his BSB. I'm not 100% on that. Uh, but in the end, I, I only lose this combat by like a couple, maybe two or three. Uh, it's not bad. No, I need an eight with a reroll. I lose by like one. It's not terrible. No, no, that's a different combat. I lose by six. Uh, no, I need a six to stay. That's what it is. I need a six to stay with a reroll. And the good old boys eat crow. <laughs> Flee. And you know what the funny part is? It's not the Halberdier unit that catches them. It's the BSB. <laughs> so, yeah. The BSB runs them down. The Halberdier unit goes far enough to run into Rufus. The only saving grace here is that at least nothing fails their panic check. <laughs> 
Oh my god! Now my Merc Vets are screwed. Rufus has his work cut off. But Rufus could pull it off. There's a chance. It depends. Uh, my opponent still has hatred and everything like that. So there, there's a chance my opponent could just murder Rufus. But we'll see. We'll see. I mean, Rufus could pull it off. He is the man, the myth, the beast, the legend. Who knows? So we go into combat over here, and Lord Tremendous is able to not destroy this thing outright. I only do four wounds. My dice are tired. You know, lower, uh, what's it called? Lower, lower uh, amounts are easier to roll, I guess. So, yeah, only four wounds. He does nothing in return. He loses by five. He breaks, and he explodes. Uh, the rocket battery does pass its panic check, but since it's a war machine, we looked it up, you, you don't get a reform. You just stand there. You're kind of surprised. You know, oh, wow, it exploded. I'll be damned. So yeah, I, I stood there and prepared to be out of, out of position for a turn. I, I don't know. At least it's dead. So here we are in the bottom of four after movement, and I did what I could. Uh, the Merc Vetch charges knights, the knights uh, flee, I tried to redirect into his uh, infantry, they fled as well, I decided to pursue the infantry, they got away, uh, the knights got away, I'm in the damn water, and I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do, because I'm about to catch a dragon and possibly a war shrine at the same time. <sighs> oh well, can't blame my opponent for playing smart. Uh, meanwhile, I did take my cannon and charge it into the flank of the halberdiers to try to help out Rufus, because that's all I had in position to help him out. And my bombardiers rally. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I completely forgot about my trappers uh, during the movement phase. Not that it really matters. What the hell were they going to do? That's it for movement. Oh, wait, yeah, I'm sorry. Lord Tremendous moves over to look at the uh, rocket battery. So next turn, hopefully I can charge him. Maybe I should have went after something else, but I wanted the rac rocket battery dead. There's a better picture of my mercenary vets failing two charges and scaring off a couple of units. Hopefully they don't come back, but I got a bad feeling. And there's a better picture of my cannon and Rufus. Hopefully they're heroes this game. During the magic phase, I get Awaken the Beast off on my mercs again, giving them plus one toughness, because I know what's coming, and I need to try to get every point of defense on these guys that I can possibly throw at them. But, of course, in order to do that, I threw four dice, and <laughs> that's right, my fourth overwhelming power, and I miscast 14. That's right, 14. So the results actually aren't that bad. I don't lose the spell or anything like that. I don't get amnesia, so that's good. And uh, the, the uh, let's see, Skaz takes three hits, uh, and he takes two wounds from it, which is good he didn't take that last one because he'd have ate it and died. And then, of course, the tribesman himself only takes one. So nobody dies, but they each have only one wound left, which means I am currently circling the drain. Four miscasts in one game, throwing no more than four dice at a spell. And I, I, the dice that I threw four dice at, or the, the dice, the spell that I threw four dice at, I thought I needed. You know, I didn't realize I was going to miscast with it, but <laughs> what can you do? So we go into combat over here, and it actually goes really well for me. I kill about eight of these guys. In return, uh, Rufus takes a couple of wounds. Charged, one, two, two ranks, uh, banner, and uh, two wounds, so six. I charge downhill in the flank, blah, blah, blah. I win this combat, but he's steadfast and makes his break check only because his BSB is literally right there. Had his BSB not been there, I think he failed his first leadership check. Uh, yeah, Rufus and uh, my, my Thunder Cannon would have been heroes, but instead, they're just awesome. So, welcome to Top of Five After Movement. Uh, in this phase, you see his dragon, his war shrine, and his infantry slam into my merc vets. <laughs> they are screwed. Uh, what's more, the knights rally, the little unit of uh, swordsmen rally. Uh, yeah. His BSB backs off a little bit and just faces Rufus, and then his, uh, what's it called? His uh, rocket battery moves out of the way. Uh, not really 100% why. I guess so I couldn't overrun into his uh, his engineer guy or whatever, but so be it. And, and yeah, that's it for movement. Oh, gosh, yeah, there's a better picture of all the nope. <laughs> Just all the nope. So there's no magic, no shooting. We go straight into combat, and it's awful. 
Oh, God. My BSB ends up in a challenge with his general, and I do like four wounds to him, and he makes all of his saves. Couldn't stop him if I had a gun to his head. In return, they are able to smoke both of my Merc Vets. Just destroys them. Uh, it, I, I'm not able to do anything. Uh, we attack his War Shrine, and maybe I do a couple of wounds to it. I don't think I do anything. I think I just flub or he makes his saves. I'm not 100%, but Mercs are dead. BSB's all by himself. I lose this combat by a landslide. I break, and his War Shrine and his unit of infantry pursue. Uh, I don't remember which one catch me, but one of them do. And his dragon restrains and turns to face, uh, I think... Rufus and the cannon, but yeah, <laughs> things are not looking positive for the ogre side of the table. Over here in combat, I, I don't even know what the hell happened here. Uh, my opponent, I'm able to kill like seven of his guys. He's able to get four wounds through on Rufus. Just, I mean, I think he did exactly two wounds from the unit and two wounds from that little character bastard there with a great weapon. Rufus dies, and that just sucks. Uh, my cannon takes a wound, uh, and that's it. It's it's really not looking good for the home team. I break, and they pursue, and the halberdiers end up into scas and the spazzes. And yes, it was a front charge. So yeah, yeah, yeah. They 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 run down the thunder cannon, in case you were wondering, and slam into scas and the spazzes. I think he literally goes twelve. So. But you know what? There is no quit in me. I'm pretty sure I can pull this off, because if anything, Skaz is reliable for my opponent. Which, yeah. <laughs> so we go over here to bottom of five after movement, and... Lord Tremendous charges the rocket battery. <laughs> what else can I do? Uh, the bombardiers move their six inches towards the BSB, and the trappers move towards him as well, hoping for a Hail Mary shot to kill him. Other than that, everything, I yell, everything else I have is is dead and ground into the dirt. So that's it for movement. There's about a picture of LT slamming into a rocket battery, and I hope I kill it. We go straight into combat, because he's got no magic of shooting. And, uh, yeah, uh, I'm able to put uh, a wound or two, maybe three on this damn thing. I can't, it doesn't, I don't remember right now. So, yeah, he does nothing to me, so I win by four. His uh, rock battery explodes because it breaks, and that's it. I can't reform, so I stand there and I admire my destruction. Oh, and then Comet over here, Skaz and his Spaz do what they do, and uh, they helped out my opponent and got just their skulls crushed. <laughs> Not that there was ever any doubt. Uh, Skaz is butt naked, and his Spaz might as well be. Both only had a wound left, they both die, and Skaz's survival streak is broken at four games. Could have been five, could have been something great, but Skaz wanted to miscast five times and I decided to play like ass. So somehow this is his fault. <laughs> So here's top of six after movement. It's my opponent's turn, and he really doesn't have anything to do. His stuff kind of turns to face my stuff, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's not like he's going to be able to do anything. He's got no magic. He's got no shooting. So that's it. That's the end of the game. We go over to bottom of six. Uh, I move all my stuff towards his general because he's got one wound left. I've got two bombardiers, two trappers, and Lord Tremendous with an ogre crossbow. If I can shoot him and wound him and he doesn't make his saves, I can kill him. But as you can see, everything that can shoots at him and nothing's able to get a wound through. And that's it. So the game ends. I tried. It would have been great to kill his general. Maybe force a panic check. Maybe pull a draw. Hell, killing his general might have given me a victory. I don't know. There's still a lot of halberdiers left. <laughs> but you know what? This was a hell of a game. I can't fault uh, my opponent. Can't even fault myself. I can fault Skaz for miscasting four times, but uh, I know a lot of you would say, well, it's you rolling the dice. I'm not taking any blame. No, I lay all this at Skaven and AZ's feet, and I can do that because I'm an ass. <laughs> But you know what, let's get into the recap, because this game is over. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. Ah, <sighs> so it was a defeat for Lord Tremendous. A well-earned defeat. Uh, I got 2,219 out of him. He got 4,222 out of me for a difference of 2,093 points. 
I ended up losing my general, Skaz, Khan, the good old boys, the Skaz's Spazzes, Bow Wowzer, Rufus, my Thunder Cannon, and my Mercs. All I had left was Lord Tremendous, a couple of trappers, and two useless bombardiers. Oh, you know what? That's who I blame. I blame the bombardiers. Those bastards are the reason I lost. It's not my fault. No. <laughs> it's, it's, it's my fault. So, yeah, things turned on me pretty solid. The four miscasts, that, that again, that's that's no one's fault, but, you know, luck of the draw. I only threw three dice at most of those. Four on a couple. And, uh, you know, the miscast table is unforgiving now, and I like it. Uh, unfortunately, not making uh, smarter decisions with my big units of combat ogres and my opponent being smart enough to flee when he should have fled. What can you do? Losing my mercs and the good old boys hurt a lot. That really won him the game. I was on the back foot, both back feet, the entire game at that point, and uh, he never let up the pressure, and that's why he won, so he deserved it. Uh, bombardiers, once again, are mostly useless, and I don't know if that's the unit's fault. I'm pretty sure it's not. I'm pretty sure it's just me. I, I can't uh, I can't use them right. They just don't work effectively for me, and uh, I'm pretty sure that's more my failing than theirs, but uh, you know what? Screw those guys. I'm not taking them anymore, or at least until I forget and take them again. And uh, if I had just killed that damn dr general on a dragon, one wound! Just had to do one wound. It wouldn't have won me the game, but it would have given me the moral victory that my heart desired. Uh, my opponent's new list is uh, quite intimidating. A 50-man brick of infantry is difficult to deal with, especially when you don't charge it. That sucked. <laughs> but I like it. I hope I see it again. Uh, his cavalry finally did something, uh, even though my mercs really did come, all around, uh, come around in the second turn of combat and massacred like five of them. That was mostly due to lethal strike. Really impressed. Uh, like I've said numerous times, four miscasts in one game was was painful, and I was just being stupid. And the saddest thing about this game, other than Rufus' death, was Skaz's survival streak was ended at four games. New high score! What a sad one to lose. But this was a very enjoyable game. I really did. It was fantastic. The whole thing. Even when it turned on me, I was still like, this is awesome. <laughs> Fantastic opponent, didn't give up, didn't quit, and uh, took it to me. Never let off the pressure. That's how you're supposed to play. And I'm looking forward to the rematch because I want to kill some more Finlings. They deserve to die. Not as much as elves do, but I'll take what I can get. Real quick, I just want to say a thank you to everyone that supports me financially through Patreon, PayPal, and other means. Really do appreciate it, guys. Uh, it, you're, you're motivating me, and it, it keeps me keeping coming back. Uh, I do have a lot more than this that are donating to me. These are the ones that don't want to remain anonymous. Those that do, I respect that. But these are the individuals that allow me to uh, thank them properly on my channel. Alex of the Vale Renegades, South Florida's Gamer Mancy Team, Daniel Jolson, and Caillou Choi. Thank you guys very, very much. I really do appreciate it. I hope I continue to be worthy of your donation. And uh, if anybody else wants to donate, you can do it through Patreon or PayPal, uh, however much you want, however little you want. I don't care. Uh, and if you want me to post something on my battle report during this section, I will happily do it phrase, your name, your gaming club, uh, event, whatever. If you want to propose to your girl or your guy, by all means, I'll throw it on here. I don't care. I got no pride. Let's do it. <laughs> but seriously, though, thank you guys very much. I do appreciate it. But that's going to do it for this one, guys. Battle Report number 47 is officially in the history books. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, feel free to put them in the comment section below, and I will get back to you as quick as I can. But yeah, guys, thanks.